Hey guys, we've had a lot of our students come to us and ask the question, how can I have a godly view of money? Well, in today's video, we're going to be talking about that. One thing that we learn from scripture is that all is vanity under the sun. That's a fact. It's a law of the universe. And the all here would certainly include our monetary aspirations, and that certainly includes money itself. However, the wisdom author that penned this familiar phrase didn't go without a few qualifiers as well. In fact, we learn, Behold that which I have seen, it is good and comely for one to eat and to drink and to enjoy all the good of his labor that he taketh under the sun all the days of his life, which God giveth him, for it is his portion. Ecclesiastes 5.18 You see, while it's inherently true that due to the fall of man and because of man's sin, we live vain, futile, fleeting lives that are equivalent to a vapor disappearing into the air, but it's also true that God still provides our fleeting, vain lives are a consequence that flows directly from our forefather, Adam, and the rebellion in the Garden of Eden. And yet, God still provides. And I don't just mean provides as in he gives us the bare essentials. I mean he really provides, including the very pleasures of life itself, the wealth of our labor, the food and the drink of our work, the joy and the love of a wife or of a husband. These are the portion that God has given us. When the verse says that these are our portion, it's talking about a possession, something that is directly given to us by God himself. These are possessions that come directly from God. A very important reality to keep in mind is that while our very salvation, the state of our souls eternal, is an unconditional matter due to the fact that we are fallen, we're in a fallen state like I mentioned a minute ago, there are a number of conditional promises throughout the Bible as well, including the ability to enjoy the vanity that we've been given. Live joyfully with the wife whom thou lovest all the days of the life of thy vanity, which he hath given thee under the sun, all the days of thy vanity. For that is thy portion in this life, and in thy labor which thou takest under the sun. Ecclesiastes 9.9 9. Now, before I continue, let me just quickly mention, I realize that the word vanity sounds pretty rough. How could we say that God is blessing us with a vain thing or with vanity? Well, it's important to remember that the underlying Hebrew word here can help shed a little bit more light on what we're talking about. The Hebrew word hival literally means vapor or breath. So what we're talking about here are things that aren't bad in and of themselves, but rather things that are short-lived, and therefore long-term fulfillment can't be pulled from these things in and of themselves. True, long-lasting spiritual fulfillment comes only from a relationship with your Creator, and an inevitable result of that relationship is that it is, quote, good and comely for one to eat and to drink and to enjoy the good of his labor that he taketh under the sun all the days of his life, and this is the most important part, which God giveth him, for it is his portion, or his possession. A part of this portion, given to us by God, is undoubtedly our money. In fact, it's explicitly referred to in the quoted verse as, quote, the good of all his labor that he taketh under the sun. In other words, there's a lot of things, a lot of benefits that come from the labor that we take part in, Money is absolutely a part of that, as well as other fruits of that labor. When money is viewed as a useful tool, one that can be used to shift the course of your family's legacy, while at the same time blessing others that aren't part of your family, whether that be missions, ministries, your own church family, nonprofit organizations, and so forth, it becomes obvious that that money is very near the top of the vanity hierarchy. It can be an absolute curse upon the person using it to indulge their sinful lusts, or it can be one of the greatest blessings ever bestowed upon a person from God himself because of the many ways in which it can be used to expand the Lord's kingdom on earth. The first step to being godly with your money is to understand that you have it for his purposes and not your own. And yet, the way he designed it is so that you can take pleasure in the outcomes of your money's work. In other words, the ways your money contributes to your family's legacy and the well-being of those that you care for and support, of which, by the way, the sky is the limit as your wealth increases more and more over time. Now, if you agree with me that that's possible and that the fruit of your labor can be the nourishment of others that you deeply care about, why would the pursuit of greater wealth ever be a bad thing? Well, the answer is it's never bad, not even a little bit, when it's acquired in that context. In other words, a biblical context. We know that the love of money is the root of all evil, but 
when you approach it biblically and you put the Lord before yourself and you put his purposes before your own, it's not evil. It's one of the most fruitful tools that, again, you can use to expand God's kingdom on earth. Money is vanity, but it's a blessing from the Lord that shouldn't ever be squandered outside of the bounds of a divine relationship with him. It's nothing but vapor. It's nothing but a breath. It's going to be gone just as quickly, if not quicker, than you acquiring it. But if you remember that it's for him and for his purposes and you have that intimate relationship with him, you're going to approach it in a way that is fulfilling ultimately in the long term because it's not for you. It's for the Lord and through that, the way he designed things, it's also for your children and your children's children and even the next generation after that. But remember, money is just one part of this fleeting yet grand life that we've been given. So let me end with an analogy, though believe me, I understand that analogies are typically lacking greatly in packing kind of the same punch as reality itself. Picture something that you enjoy that's utterly amusing to you, yet something that you know doesn't necessarily carry a whole lot of eternal gravity with it. Maybe it's getting to see your favorite band or your favorite musician in concert. The crowd has roughly two hours of this experience before it's over and everyone goes home. The wise man will sit back, he'll soak in every minute of it, at times with a gleeful grin or perhaps a more sentimental response to his favorite song being played, thanking God for the gift of vanity, a fleeting moment in the grand scheme of a life that he will never forget and will always be grateful for. The unwise person at the same concert will be too distracted with drumming up the next big thing to experience while passively filming the show that's happening right in front of him with his phone. Now imagine that concert is a tiny picture or a tiny representative of all of life. The time is limited and it's filled with these little vaporous gifts from God himself. Will you be able to enjoy them, to rejoice in them? If you do not have a personal relationship with him right now, the answer is an emphatic no. Now I realize that there are billions of people out there living what appears to be a very fulfilling life while openly rejecting the message of the gospel of Christ. But the problem is this vaporous life comes to an end quickly and the experiential fulfillment of it will come to a decisive head when each of us in our final moments of this life look back. Because you're going to be afraid. You'll be regretful. You'll wonder how it all happened so quickly and that the end is near. Or you'll blissfully enter those final moments understanding that everything that came before it was merely the preamble. And one of the most distinct gifts from God is that preamble, that vaporous life that came and went leading into the eternal state in the presence of your very creator. So keep that in mind. When we think about a godly view of money, we have to keep at the forefront, number one, our relationship with him, but number two, the fact that while it is by definition vanity, it's vaporous, it's a breath, it comes and goes quicker than we can even imagine, it is still a gift directly from him. And when we use it right, when we use it correctly, it can bring long-term, genuine, legitimate fulfillment. And I know that can be true for you guys as well, but you got to put him first. Otherwise, it's just vanity. If you liked what you watched, check out the links in the description below. You can like and subscribe to this channel. It would mean so much to us, and y'all have a great day.